I want to know who's responsible for this, because I'm coming after you. Well, everyone, I was really excited about a blaze of purple light glowing on my window ledge, but alas, alack, the skies are not cooperating today, but at least we have a break from the heat. Hey, the purple still looks nice, and when do I find this many purple antiques? Most of these, well, some of these are antique and some of them are not. But let's take a quick look at the purple stuff here. Some of it you've already seen. Just wanted to show you again the beautiful Robert Held vase. And um, this piece right here, I understand from some of my Canadian friends, Mr. Held is still producing his beautiful art glass. And this just reminds me so much of the Lotz glass, the style of glass. Uh, that Lotz and other companies were making in the Art Nouveau days. Really pretty, this purple amethyst. And, well, the sun is not shining through like I want it to, but I hope you can still see how beautiful that is. I don't know if, but you can pick up the blue and the green, just all the iridescence. It is signed there, and that's up for auction. There's no damage on it either. And then our good old friend, Hairpin, as collectors call it, or Newport. It's a pattern that came on the scene in the 1930s. And um, again, it's called Newport by Hazel Atlas. Collectors call it Hairpin. You can see why. So I've got three sherbet dishes and two, uh, I guess, cereal bowls or dessert bowls, which I, these are a little harder to find, these little five, I think five and a half inches. So that's one lot that's being sold if you happen to be a, a hairpin <laughs> a collector. And then also in the same pattern, a uh, 11 and a half inch serving platter and two vegetable bowls. So we'll look at one of them up here in the sunlight, what sunlight we have. Really pretty color amethyst glass, and I like the pattern. It's a simple pattern. It's nice, I guess, to take a break from etched flowers and grapes. And then there's the, uh, there's the big platter. Now the platter uh, has no chips or cracks, but there's a little ding, a little like windshield right there, spot where something nicked it, and, and it did take a little tiny, you can see it, just a little tiny nick of glass, right? Just, which is unusual because normally we have chips and cracks in places other than that. There it is. So I'm selling the platter and the two vegetable serving bowls together in one auction. I think it's sometimes a little bit harder to find serving pieces Usually they had to be purchased rather than given away. The cups and saucers were usually given away. Then I went back and got the nut set here, the Noritake uh, hand-painted nut service with the master bowl here and the six little bowls. We'll turn it over and we can see the more and more, more and more, the Mora Mora Brothers M. Noritake, and it doesn't say Nippon, it says made in Japan. So we're somewhere in the, I think this mark was used from the 20s uh, through the 30s, maybe up to about 1940. But this set probably dates to right around 1930 or so. And it's in excellent condition. It's all hand painted and really, I've seen some of these sets before. I haven't seen too many in purple. Uh, so, yeah, everything here is all individually painted, and the little look how dainty the little cups are, and they stand up, stand there like that. Everything is marked, and as I said, there's no chips or cracks on this set. How elegant to have um, to, to be seated at the table 
and to have the, uh, when you have your nuts and cheese to be served in this, just the right serving. Uh, and then finally, this other piece, I cannot, and boy, if you guys can help me, I love it. I cannot find anything about this glaze, and I know my camera is not picking up. That's a little bit better. Again, it's a Noritake piece here. We see the green mark on the back, and uh, this one again, made in Japan. So we have luster wear, and we're probably some, somewhere again, the mid 20s into the mid 30s. Have you ever seen a glaze like that on a piece of luster, a piece of Noritake? I certainly haven't. I don't know what you would call it. I don't even know how to describe it. It almost looks like the top of an eggplant there. And just a really unusual, very unusual glaze. I hope that you can see. Now, of course, I always say you can get better pictures if you go to the auction website. Uh, the link to my shop is in the description box below. The, uh, the link to my description box. The link to my U eBay store is in the description box below. Okay, so purple rain, purple haze. Hello, Boston Fern in yellow cookie jar. All right, let's go do something else. Okay. <laughs> what we have here is a hot mess. I want you to ignore this, put it around my, well, that wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> um, let's just take a look at this for a minute. I'll, I'll hush. I'll let you study it. Mm-hmm. You studying it? You figured it out yet? Are you as outraged as I am? All right. What has happened? Someone has taken a fantastic candlestick holder, glass. This is good glass. It's not marked. It might be high C. I haven't gone to my candlestick books to look this up. Some of you are going to know that. Ignore this thing on the top. Try to just imagine that that's not there and concentrate on a flat top here and just how wonderfully geometrically simple this beautiful glass candlestick is it's wonderful crystal again i'm getting a i'm getting a heisey feel but that might not be heisey i'm ju it's just good glass <laughs> and um what has happened to it someone has taken a cheap ashtray and permanently stuck it to the top of this candlestick and turn it into a lamp. I think it's horrible. <laughs> this is a very cheap ashtray. See the little divots for the, is that what you call it, for the cigarettes? It's an ashtray. I guess they made conversion kits because you can see that um, they first drilled a hole in the back. If they hadn't drilled that hole, I could pry this metal back. You see, this, this has been placed on the top, right? They drilled a hole, and then with this conversion kit, they stuck this ashtray on top, then uh, put the hardware through, and then you just simply bend this metal. You see? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm back. I'm having an awful time, aren't I? With stuff crashing and falling, and, and now the Boston Fern is trying to get back in there. All right, scram, Fern. Let's, let's do this right. Come on. What do you think this is? This is, this is, well, it's not MGM. <laughs> Okay, so that's what they did. You stick this metal on there and then you, you bend the tabs and that's what holds it in place. So even if I tried to unbend these, we'd still have a big hole in the back of this candlestick. So basically it's stuck the way that it is. I guess I could live with it if they hadn't stuck an ashtray on the top of it. Ooh. 
I quit. Okay. I'm gonna try this one more time. I am now so flustered, I had to stop and eat a cheese. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Yes, I'm smacking my lips. All right, hold on. Now, if anybody has these candlesticks, if you own them and you say, well, Scott, it's not that bad. Um, you know, I'd like it. I can actually use it as a lamp. Maybe you could put a lampshade on there. Um, or maybe you want to pry this metal off, get rid of this ashtray and put something else on there. Then I will put it up for sale. If not, I bought it for $2 um, just to feel sorry for it. I don't, I don't know what else to do. By being overly dramatic about it, I really like this candlestick and I want to know the pattern. Anybody know I haven't had a chance? I've just been running around, running around. Oh, let me show you the, all of the, the uh, little Joseph birthday girls that are, that are going to be uh, up for auction. Okay, I don't have these listed yet, but maybe by the time this video goes up, I'll have an opportunity to get them listed. Um, and if not, they should be up within the next 24 to 48 hours. So we have birthday 18 with her, um, with her fan. She must be Southern. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going out of order. We have 17. She's playing a lute. We used to have a TV station here in Philly called 17, The Great Entertainer. Remember UHF? Mm-hmm. When you had to spin the dial, we had channel 17, channel 23. Those were the weird stations. Anyway, we have 17 playing, jamming out on her lute. And there's 18, which I already, sh 17 is kind of a yellowish color. 18 is green. And then trusty huckster Patrick and I were chatting with each other about, you know, did they still give these to girls at age 19 and 20? Uh, I guess I kind of would have thought it would have stopped kind of like around age 16, but apparently not. So what is she? She's got a bird. Bird in hand. 19. Pink, 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 and uh, number 20, age 20, in a blue dress, and she's out picking, has she got buns in her uh, basket? She's serving rolls. No, those are uh, flowers. She's picking roses, I guess. There's not a whole lot of detail. I mean, that's kind of a scary face. <laughs> Is it not? I don't know, she doesn't seem, maybe she's upset she just turned 20 and she's not married yet, poor thing. Well, that's really old fashioned. People, you know, get married much later. Well, back when these were popular, everybody got married. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people got married when they were much younger, right? Back in the 50s and 60s. Anyway, there she is, age 20. All right, so uh, the four of those Joseph originals are going to go up just as soon as I can get them photographed and listed. Well, I don't know if it's gonna, oh, 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 I do have something else to show you, so hold on. Okay, I went to the thrift shop this morning and someone had donated a whole bunch of nice elegant depression glass plates i have never seen these before i don't know who made them i haven't had a chance to look any of them up they're not the cheap 
mass-produced depression glass, you know, hazel atlas, uh, anchor hocking, blah, blah, blah. These are nicer, and so uh, they, they have embossed patterns on them rather than, than etching, but I don't quickly recognize any of them. Uh, here is a set of one, two, three, four, five, six in a very pale green color. Uh, I did wash them, so six luncheon plates. Again, these aren't listed yet, but they will be. Okay, try to take a look. Oh, this is going to be so hard. I know I'm not. Are you able to see the pattern? No, I should have a... Uh, I know what to do. I'll stand up. Ooh. That might help. Did, did that help you see the pattern? No, not really. Well, sorry about that. I'll have to get them out on the kitchen counter and you'll be able to see them a lot better. Uh, just wonder if anybody knows what that pattern is. Six of these and this is still uranium glass, and it's, it's this color, yellow, green, I haven't seen very often. I think this is sort of in between yellow and green. Not quite Vaseline. I would not call this Vaseline glass. Vaseline is going to be yellow, but this is leaning in that direction. All right, really pretty six of them. Now, all the plates I'm a... I'm a all the plates I'm going to show you now are of the same pattern, but I've got pink and green. Only three in pink, sadly. I wish there were more. But this is either a dogwood or a cherry blossom, and I know you've told me before how to tell the difference between the two. Uh, so I'll let you look there. Well, that Boston fern is just dying to get in here. All right, do I have to stand up and show you the, uh... Does that help? Not really. All right, so I've got uh, three of these in pink. Three in pink. Just three. But luncheon plates and uh, the same size, four in green. So I'll let you see. So there are four in green. And notice this green is a little bit different from this green. So not the same, not the same, you know, there are there were different shades of depression green. We can see that here. But uranium in all of these. All right, there they are again, with that pat, same pattern on there. And we'll just let you see how they look. You see all the boxes behind me? I have to get, uh, all of those things to the post. Maybe you can't see they're down there on the floor. So, same pattern. And uh, pink and green. The pink is very delicate, and sometimes it's hard to get the pink to show up when you're filming like this. But So anyway, I will uh, get all of these photographed and listed just as soon as I can. Um, and uh, that's probably going to be it for this. Just a short and sweet little one this afternoon to show you what's up for sale and what's going to be up for sale very soon. Thank you again for watching, everyone. I certainly do appreciate all of your comments as well. And I really want to thank you. So many of you encouraged me, and you seemed to like our trip down to the Curtis Publishing Company to see that wonderful Tiffany Glass mosaic designed by Maxfield Parish and funded by Edward Bach, the publisher. Uh, all Tiffany Favreau glass. If you didn't get to see it, go back, oh, seven or eight videos deep into my video archive, and I think you'll enjoy it. But I want to thank you for watching that and for, most of you said you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more uh, field trips like that. So, I guess... We need to do another field trip. Any suggestions? The Liberty Bell, Betsy Ross House, the Mütter Museum. Okay, that's it. I appreciate you watching, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. Here comes the cat. So long for now.